Welcome to the comments below surfing. I'm Paul Evans. And I'm Ben Mundy. Yes, he is indeed. This is the show where you guys out there decide what we talk about. That's right. Now, this is the very first episode of this incredible show. We're on YouTube. It's going to be huge, but we've had to scale the internet for comments just for this time. In future, we want you to write in. We want, you, we want to hear what, what you want. You shape the show. You decide. Give us your comments. Post them below. We will talk all about them. I promise you that. Yeah, well, we've got a packed show first time out. Some big topics here today. Massive surf all around Europe, around the world as well, but particularly here in Europe. And we've got the man who takes on those giant swells, Andrew Cotton. He's going to be live next to Monday. Monday's warming up a little spot for him on the couch. He's coming in the studio whenever he gets here. We've got the ASP tour kicking off again. With some stuff about Alana Blanchard, I guess, oh, have I, we? Oh, I hope so. Let's shoehorn her in there somewhere, if it's all <laughs> I possible. Love this, I love to shoehorn Alana Blanchard. OK, well, let's get down to our first comment. And this one comes in from Jose Vicente Cordero. And he says, congrats, King Kelly. His performances in Hawaii leave no doubt as to his chances of grabbing the world title this year. Uh, he's talking about Kelly Slater, uh, the world's greatest ever surfer. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what he's talking about because he was into Pipeline. He won in the event, he won it. Pretty much, if he goes in an event at Pipeline, they just give him the check because he needs the money and they give him the trophy. They say, there you go, Kelly, you've won. Don't worry about it. He's that good out there. He won the event just before Christmas. Didn't win the world title, but he won that event. So I'm thinking what Vincent is getting on about is that um, he's fired up for 2014. Kelly Slater is ready for battle. He's surfing the other events. He's fired up. It was his birthday this week. He's 106, 92. He's like, if Kelly Slater is fired up for action, if he's entering other events that he doesn't even have to be in, that means he's set for a huge 2014. All right, well, that's what Ben thinks about Kelly Slater. What we really want to know is, what do you guys out there think about Kelly? Do you like him? Do you hate him? Do you love him? How old is he really? Please write. Tell us. Speaking of comments, I've got another one here. And it's, um, it says here, this one's from Charlie Conway. Doing the first two QS comps, hey? He can try and bullshit that he doesn't want to re-qualify this year, but I'm not buying it. I bet if he gets a decent result in one of those first two contests, that we can see a lot more of that man in the contest jersey this year. Mm, I guess this one is about Dane Reynolds. Big news that Dane Reynolds, he hasn't officially sort of announced that he's coming back, but he's surfing in two foot beach breaks in Manly with a contest thing going on it would indicate that he's kind of having a fair crack at this contest business. And he's been throwing a lot more spray. I think, just, all, all I can say is that he's, I've, heard on, I've heard on the street that he's gone up a, a bracket in the board short department. He's gone from 33 Ooh. to 34. That's what Ooh, that's me all out. I'm saying. Ben Monty just called Dane Reynolds fat. I didn't say he was fat. I'm just saying he's, fuck it, I'll say it, I don't care. I've heard he's fucking pretty big right now. Yeah, not like, whoa, like, Fat, fat, but more fat than he was. Give an Australian half a can of Stella and he starts dissing <laughs> the greatest surfer that's ever lived. But we want to know what you guys really think out there. What do you think about Dane Reynolds? How badly do you want to see him back on tour? Would you rather he carried on doing his indie thing and making his little movies and being cute? Well, it has been a crazy winter in terms of swell. Non-stop huge waves pounding the coasts. And uh, well, one wave in particular has had massive mainstream coverage. It's Andrew Cotton. It's a beast of a wave. Let's have a look at it. Well, it's come to that part of the show. It's a great honor to announce live guests here with us in the studio. It's Cotty and Mikey is former. Welcome to the show, guys. Thanks for having Thank us. You. How's, How's it? <laughs> How's it? <laughs> All right, well, Cotty obviously doesn't need much of an introduction. Been in the news a lot lately. We've got some comments about him and about his exploits. Let's go straight down to the first one. And this one comes in from Alex Hamilton. And Alex is saying, whether he made it or not, this is the biggest wave ever ridden. I don't actually know. It looks like the biggest wave, doesn't it? It looks pretty big. But is it though? You know, like, does it really matter? I don't know. Does, does it? Does it I don't matter need, to you? Not really, no. It's probably the most challenging straight hander I've ever had. But, you know, one wave in a four hour session is not, not fun, is it? Mikey, what do you reckon? Biggest wave ever ridden on the uh, spot? Yes. And on that note, do we get, I mean, is someone gonna, is someone gonna answer that? Is there gonna be an official measurement? Will the XXL give it official size? When, when does that all I, stuff kind of get happen? Or do you, I don't, yeah, I suppose that's, it's entered into the Billabong XXL. So, you know, luckily they measure it, not me. So 
I think Cody says yes, it's the biggest wave I've ever seen. <laughs> That's all I can get from that. Moving swiftly along, Acid Clown 33. And uh, Acid Clown saying, riding straight down the face and getting wiped out before you even get to the trough doesn't count. Ooh. <laughs> you have to at least make the wave for it to count as ride of the year. Ooh, meow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, really I, I didn't fall off on purpose. I, I was going to try to make it. <laughs> ah. You know, like if I'd made that wave, they'd go, what's the guy doing? He's shoulder hopping. Nathan's already won a ride of the year. Didn't make his wave, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, he didn't make it out of that. So, yeah, he should I, know, that, I think that, that <laughs> you know, like that, that question's already been answered, isn't it? This one's from Freddie Johnson. Uh, Freddie. In Aberdeenshire, up there in Bonnie, Scotland. And Freddie says, following his dream, question mark, what a very silly quote in this case. He jeopardized his loving family's future. That's what the numpty did. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you say to Freddie? Freddie. Uh, what do I say to Freddie? Tell him you hate plumbing. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that, that, that picture, one picture of like one person going down like a big wave, whether it's anywhere, whether it's Chopes, Nazare, Jaws, or whatever, it doesn't really tell a picture of like, dedication, safety team, preparation, like the sort of my personal safety, my flotation and stuff that I work on. Garrett's one of the, like, the best watermen in the world, best rescue drivers, you know, we've got a backup ski, we've got medics on the beach, we've got communications, do you know what I mean? It's like a f massive setup. I think you can summarise that by saying, you probably don't, probably don't want to say it, but Freddie, you're a fuckwit. <laughs> right? That's what, that's why you, you know. Even all his safety is about Freddy. That's a good way to encourage, encourage the commentators, Ben. Yeah. Well, fucking bring there it on, comment all you like. But if it's, yeah. you know, I'm going to say it off your yeah, call. And I believe you, didn't you have a question yourself? I, well, you I, I think I did, yeah. Well, I was just thinking, now there's been massive swells in Europe, it's all been going on, and do you ever think that when as big swells come, you might actually go and surf a wave that breaks? <laughs> <laughs> you ever think uh, of that? Well, that's, that's, <laughs> like, Mikey, you shouldn't, you want to film a wave that breaks. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm pretty keen to get him onto a wave that breaks at yeah. some point. <laughs> yes, that's my, my question. Yeah, that, and that's all I want to do as well, you know? All right. Of course, you know. You, you, the thing is, is that we're lucky enough to be on a project here with Epic TV and the, you know, so we're out, out we're, our mission is out to get like the biggest wave. I want to go and surf Mullet Moor at 80 feet, of course I do, you know? Or, you know but we haven't had any of those swells yet. Okay, well, we touched a bit on Mully Sessions before, and um, Tom Wright says some big and gnarly waves at Mullamore last weekend. You weren't up there, obviously, but I guess you checked some of the footage out, Cotty? Um, yeah, no, I did, yeah, and, and uh, it looks insane, you know, and it's good to see, finally, footage coming from the channel, because we've been surfing it for so long, and it was just like the, the land footage, which never really did it justice, you know, another, no one really understood how big it was, and, yeah. for example, Tom Butler's wave, like, it looks... It looks big from land, but oh my God, it looks ridiculous from the channel, you know? It's a heavy wave, you know, it's really heavy. Really yeah. boily as well. Um, yeah, Mikey, Mikey swam it the last time we surfed it and um, was shooting water. I'd be sitting there and then the next thing I'd be like spinning 360 degrees because I'd be on top of a boil. Right, it just comes fresh. up and I'd be like, ah! Well, Ireland going pretty nuts this winter. And if you're a fan of surfing in Ireland, don't forget <laughs> to check out a new web series. Fergal Smith It's called Growing. It's about surfing. It's about horticulture. Yeah, check it out. He's one of the most interesting characters in surfing. Just gone full eco, does everything on his own. He's just a, a unique sort of a guy with an incredible surfing talent. And he's obviously charging everything that comes his way in Ireland. So. Um, yeah, check it out. Well, I guess uh, at this point we've got to say thanks to the boys for coming in. They've come a long way down from Devonshire up to see us. Through the floods. It's Through great floods, to see yeah. you guys. Thanks for having us. Thanks yeah, for coming thank in. Pleasure. And, come um, on, bring it in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that's just> <laughs> <laughs> so let's have a look at our next comment. Kieran Hughes. And Kieran's saying, if webcasts are centralised, who will get the commentary jobs? Besides Oki, of course. Yes. I, I know what he's getting at there. Uh, he's talking about the commentators on the webcast. So all the events uh, on the World Tour are, are broadcast live, and they're pretty good. They're good webcasts. You get to see the surfing, you know, you get to see your stars, but there's some commentators and they divide opinion. Some love them, some hate them. There's guys in there you can't stand. You can't imagine anyone being annoying talking about surfing, <laughs> could you? No. As if that would ever happen. Yeah, I can't even... I, I, Fuck, it's actually blowing my brain, that concept. Well, I guess the story here is, you know, same guys at every event, and the idea behind that, I guess, has been a bit of talk with, in the past, every event's got their own team, and quite often they're people that work for the brands, and 
can become a bit kind of pally and it'd be good to see a bit of impartiality, a bit of consistency. Like you said, everyone's got their favourites. Ben? Well, no one gives a flying fuck what they, I think, Paul, but these people out there, we want to hear what they think. Who do you like? All right, well, let's take it to the next comment. And this one comes in from Golda Golda Goldist. Golda Golda Goldist is saying, boo, he's a doctor. He only gets a 2.5 stars. If a regular Joe did this, he'd get all five. Uh, I'm pretty sure she's talking about a um, shark attack in New Zealand where a doctor got bitten by a shark. He was spearfishing, stupid thing to do anyway. Came straight in, quickly sewed himself up, drove to the pub, had a pint from the Mukanuka Wukanuka Hakakana pub, then went to the hospital. And um, yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty legendary. Would you have a beer before you went to hospital? Ben Mundy, what would you do? Um, yeah, I would pretty much like, I wouldn't even go to the hospital. That's where he let himself down. All right, well, moving on to a topic, probably something that maybe guys would rather see in the surf. And this one comes from Carl Walton. He says, Jack Freestone might just be the luckiest man on the planet. Only he really knows for sure. Alana is quite a catch, my man. Oh, it's about Alana Blanchard, a, a Hawaiian surfer and a very attractive one at that. And Jack Freestone, an Australian uh, very good surfer, former um, junior world champion. And they've um, come together and they're a couple and they're like having sex and stuff. They're like a celebrity posh and bex of surfing. But is that interesting? Is it just celebrity culture gone mad? Why are we interested in this couple? Is it something we need to be reporting on? Why are we even talking about it now? No, you're asking the questions, are you? Are you interested? No. Is that something you like to log on to see? Oh, I have logged on to Lana's, um, you know. If you're not sure what we're talking about, we're gonna have a little look at some footage from Network A. They got the webisode series with Alana Blanchard. Let's have a little look at some of it. Me and Jack met on the North Shore of Oahu last year. And I kind of was like a little hesitant, hesitant at first because I, I just like never thought I would date a pro surfer. That was amazing. I mean, I've seen some good clips, you know, this month, but that one. Let us know what you guys think. Are you fans of Alana Blanchard? Are you fans of celebrity power couples and surfing? All right, well, we've come to that part of the show. We've had a lot of comments, um, just that little bit more profound, stir that little bit more emotion than others. And this is the part we like to call Deep Thoughts. I love Deep Thoughts. It's my favorite part of the show. We've got one here, and this one, one comes from Hawaiian pro Najee Melamed. Oh, She's on the qualifiers old soul. For the ladies. And then Najee, well, she said, there are pros and cons to every age, but I just really miss being 10 years old. Oh, look, of all the time, if you could pick the time in your life that you most, that you really want to be, oh, it wouldn't be 10 for me. I, I no pubic hair is a big thing that I didn't enjoy. No money, no freedom. You had to, mum and dad had to drive no you to the freedom. beach. What are you on about? Yeah, that's all you had was freedom. I mean, we, look at we, Ke Kelly Slater. He's like 79. Did we say his birthday was this week? He's still, might be having his best year of his life. What have you got? We want, I want some more deep thoughts. We need, we need deep thoughts from you. Seems like we've reached the end of the first episode of Comments Below Surfing. We've had a bit of fun. We've had Andrew Cotty on the couch. We've had some big waves. We've had some Kelly and Dane. Lana and Jack. We've had Lana and Jack. We've had sharks, bit of everything. Any of these topics, any topics in the world of surfing, you let us know what you guys want to talk about. Subscribe to Line 9. It's been fantastic. I'm Ben Mundy. That's Paul Evans. Get a dog up ya. Woo. Can we just talk about how big his testicles? I mean, I, I can still see the imprint just down here on the, on the couch. I, I can feel the warmth of his testicles because they must be like, oh, I think, look. As long as you're enjoying see, yourself. You can still see the imprints of, these, of his massive testicles.